Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, cause this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use, so sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or carp, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong, they'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Welcome everyone to Talking Fishing, a big show coming your way as we head into a run of summer weather again, and we're counting down the days to Christmas. Plenty of fish and a great variety in Catch of the Week this week, including some nice Murray Cod. We have some more details on the fish aggregating devices we mentioned last week, and a specialist small flathead fisherman joins us on the couch tonight. All the regular segments tonight and plenty more. So let's get into it with a big welcome to the man who travels by kayak, Adam Ring. Welcome, Ads. Thanks, Dave. Good to be back after a week off as we roll into a bit of warm weather again. So you went hopefully up to... I was in Wollongong. Wollongong, yeah. yeah weather, I, how was the weather? Beautiful show? in New South Wales? No, definitely not. <laughs> it was it was about blew 35 knots the whole time, insanely humid yeah. and very wet. So I was up there for a wedding and yeah. the rain didn't start until half an hour before the wedding. So oh, congratulations to my brother-in-law, Shane, his new wife. Mel. It, would, it ended up being a great day. There were a few stresses early on, but no. it's good to be home. It's busy and it's getting warm and it's a, a well, good time. The weather's going to be, be fantastic here, right? in the next few days. In fact, the next week, I think, is looking pretty good. And it's always a big welcome to the man all the way from Shepparton, Stephen Victor Trellfall. Welcome, Trelly. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you look forward to that intro every week, don't oh, you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it just hey? gets longer and longer. Doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It just stretch it out. And... A very special guest joins us on the couch tonight. As revealed on the 3RW rumour file this morning, it's a warm welcome to 3RW news presenter Tony Tardio. Welcome, Tony. David, uh, thank you very much for asking me. Stephen and uh, Adam, it's a, an honour to be here with uh, such esteemed fishing folk. Oh, there you go. We're going to uh, pull some stories out of you tonight, yeah, Tony. Yeah, I can I've tell you. a lot of stories, let me tell you. But first, let me pull you up, because you said a specialist small flathead fisherman. Yes. I heard that. No, that's not true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I catch them, yeah. they're big. Yeah. yeah because how, many, how many have you caught this year, Tony? <laughs> we've had a lean patch this year. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a tough season. <laughs> I, I must say, we Maybe went out. We went out last week off, yeah. off Werribee South because Werribee South, where we used to go, we used yeah. to catch huge flathead. Yeah. But the last two weeks, we have caught nothing for two weeks. I want to ask you, what's going on there? What, the flathead what? are in the biggest numbers that we've seen in many, many years, Tony, and they've made a big comeback. Well, they're not um, where we were, and we covered a fair <laughs> bit of Werribee <laughs> South uh, on Sunday. Hey, and Tony, I'll give you so a, a t well, <laughs> we'll, int we'll introduce you to the tricks of our trade. When the fishing's tough, the weather's bad. Yes. There's too many boats on the water. Yes. It's too hot. No, well, I've, yeah. I've, I've been out with David, and, and it was full moon last night. Oh, there we go. That's the ultimate. Yeah, full moon. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we're going to talk about some there stories, there. Uh, Tony. <laughs> but, Tony, you, you, you've been uh, on radio for how many years? Oh, well, I, uh, 1982 I started. That's a with, long time. In, in Alice Springs. Not much fishing in Alice Springs. No, there you go. Yeah, and try. many people would hear your voice daily on 3RW, but... They've, they're seeing you in the flesh. Yeah, well, I'm a bit there is women just throwing themselves at the. Uh, could you say hello to Marie for me, please? Just look at the camera over yeah, there. Which, say, which camera am I looking uh, at? Over there, so we just say hello to Marie. 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 Yeah, there you go. That'd yeah. be good. To put, to put that into context, to, uh, yeah. who is Marie, by the way? I'm not telling you. That was three years before I was born. You were in radio. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, let's have a look at what's being caught by the people at home. It's time for Catch of the Week. Catch of the Week, brought to you by Shimano, providing reliable, trustworthy, quality fishing gear for your enjoyment. Now, Tony, if you're any decent fisherman, this was what you would be catching. I'll tell you what, there's some crackers coming up. Aaron Bickers, have a look at this a gummy shark. Nice size, beautiful pan size there, off Stony Point, and nice there's been fish. some fantastic gummy fish, gummy shark. Caught well, I've in caught gummy, port. gummy fish, gummy shark, but yeah. we don't know how to, you know, like the skin is pretty tough, so you got to know how you to... You don't eat the skin, Tony. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, just know. Know. I'm just trying to give you some tips on yeah, it. Like, no, I understand know. the tips, but we, we, it's just getting rid of the skin to yeah. get to the fleshy part. Just use a knife a and trick? skin it. Yeah, 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 yeah there's a trick to yeah, Give yeah. your mate five bucks and tell him to skin it. Yeah. <laughs> what about... The, yeah, what about the, we've got ten to get through, Tony. What about this one? <laughs> Tom Kane, uh, he got... A nice bag of King George Whiting nice off the of top whiting. of the middle spit, which was a hot yep. spot last week. There you go. Um, there's some beautiful King George Whiting, the biggest I physically saw during the week. Hot spot 
Yeah, no. Yeah. I took a photo of one on Sunday morning, 47 centimetres, um, thicker than your wrist. Yeah. That was out of Western Port. Well, I think yeah. that's as big as the one I caught in that fishing competition that you ran. What was the first prize of that? The first you prize was a 1978 bottle of Grange, and, and you which I looked up is worth about $755. <laughs> US. And uh, you got pipped by a flathead, yeah. didn't you, that day? Well, I got pipped by Even the though it was a whiting <laughs> competition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> we rigged it. I we rigged it. Oh, the the was being changed. Caught it where it wasn't really caught. That, huh? <laughs> They're yelling at me, Tony. We're going to keep going. Peter Grossi, have a look at this. A six point. Uh, we're over in Port Phillip now. Six point eight five kilo snapper at P two, which is one of the markers up the top end, Correct. heading towards. In fact, you can see Melbourne in the background. Still some big snapper getting around. The old Tona Towers there. Yeah. <laughs> There's um, some good snap That's around. A big uh, off Frankston, fish. there's been some and good numbers. Too. I think it's been an early morning bite off Frankston, but yep. Calvin De Silva also got some nice snapper. We might show a photo of him any minute we now. Know, there you good, go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well done. Calvin. And look, horrendous conditions you can yeah, see in the background shocking. there. I mean, it is, yeah, it's Tony. really unsafe to be out in those conditions, <laughs> yeah. Tony. But He's wearing a life jacket though, so it's good. He is. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've got a good. mate who will not go out unless it's like a bathtub. Yeah, yeah I'll be, just, I'll and be he with takes him. about three tablets to go out <laughs> to, yeah. to go out in that. <laughs> Same as me. <laughs> All right, have a look at the gummy sharks coming from down on the Mornington Peninsula, southern end of Port Phillip Bay. Robert Johnson got out with his mate, and 17 oh, kilos of gummy have a shark. Look at that. Yeah. that is a beautiful gummy, isn't That's it? That's a river. Yeah, I haven't seen Robbie for a while. Good on you, mate. That's um, now, Tony. You've got to throw those ones back, mate. All those big ones are all female. So but if I saw that coming up out of the water, I yeah. would absolutely <laughs> uh, rely on your life jacket. I, I would, <laughs> I would, I would shat my pants if I could say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, keep it local but inland and have a look at this because Devil Bend Reservoir has been opened, boys, to kayaks, even though they only opened, disappointingly, 15%. <laughs> We've got two right. photos on tonight. If they'd have opened the whole lot, we would have had 60 photos on. I think he was casting Take. outside the 15%. Do you reckon? <laughs> oh, for have sure. Have a look at this. David Lever got a beautiful brown trout out of his kayak on the weekend. Love Great it. fish. Um, that's... Uh, and, and the condition of yeah. that fish. That is a beautiful looking brown trout. Great looking yeah. fish. It would have been a lot fatter if you didn't gut it, but anyway, that's for yeah, the photo, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also a mix of rainbow in uh, in Devil Bend Reservoir. And have a look at Brendan Cunningham's fish. He was also on a kayak. Obviously the quarry in the background, yep, so yep. people that know that area, but some beautiful rainbows in there as well. And stories of a lot of estuary perch. Mm -hmm. But also a photo that didn't make the show tonight, Adam, yep. of how long? 48 centimetres. Of redfin. Of redfin, oh, which Marlon Marl Blackford caught. Oh, I, was, yeah. I think it was caught on the weekend, but okay. I saw the photo this morning. Yeah. But We'll Marlin, put it on next week because yeah. that is a cracker fish. Yeah. And he's just a little jet of a kid, Marlon. Mm. He just gets it done. Yeah, there you go. All right, let's turn our uh, our focus on Murray Cod because it is cod season. The 1st of December it opened. Trelly with a massive downpour and all the rivers are <laughs> yeah, flowing right. brown and looking like down. coffee. Yeah. Uh, yep. But Michaela Harding um, was up on uh, what uh, up in, on the Yarra, Not I think. Yarra, yeah, Warrandyte. Yeah. Warrandyte. Yeah. That's a bit close to Melbourne, is that? No, that's good, yeah. There's, I, there's good cod up that way, isn't it? That's surprising what's up that way, and, and obviously Michaela's got onto one there, which is a great, great work. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. A few tiger snakes up around that way, too. Yeah. Is there? Tiger yeah. snakes, yeah. Oh, yeah, a different lure for them. Dee Dee was walking around her place uh, this morning, yeah. and she posted a. Yeah. Oh, I saw a that on her Twitter a, this morning. Yeah. Of tiger snake, yeah. yeah. You stick a fork in their body, and you can peel them back. Actually, they're pretty easy to skin. Bit of flour, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, keeping on the Murray cod theme, a seventy-five centimetre Murray cod by Jermaine Mifsud. Have a look at this one. Now, Jermaine uh, won the. You can see the competition or the, yeah. or the club northern suburbs i can't quite read that from here but um won the comp with a beautiful 75 centimeter murray cod up at lake yielden and plenty of good fish trolley caught up at lake there's yielden. been some great reports i mean we had the uh, the cod conference or the conference in Shepparton on the weekend and uh, a few people didn't turn up and that's where i reckon they were yeah we had uh, three reports that we know of of meter fish being caught uh, on the Sunday, from really early morning go. through the Sunday. So, how, yes, how old would fish. a cod like that be? Is that like uh, probably 15 years yeah, or something? How big is that one? Yeah, yeah that'd be, yeah, yeah, you're pretty right, actually. Yeah. Tony, yeah. They don't bro Tony, they don't breed in Lake Hill, no, so they stock them and you can fish for mm. them all year round. And here's yeah. another one Paul DeLisle got a lovely Murray cod. Uh, that was around about the same size, Paulie D. and uh, that was caught on Saturday. So no. spectacular fishing up at Lake Yield at the moment. It's oh, all a little no. bit late. Yeah, get amongst it. If you would like quickly. to send in your pick of catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your
your photo on TV, email your fishing pic to info at ifish.com.au. And next on Talking Fishing Fisheries News, including a detailed look at where Victoria's fads will be located right after this. Talking Fishing We know what you'd rather be doing We know what you've really got in mind We know you'd rather be out fishing And today's the day you're gonna wet a line Cause every day's a good day Stop wishing Every day's a chance to drift away Drift away Every day's a good day for fishing See you down and tackle world today Talking fishing, talking fishing Nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne, it's now time for some very fishy news. I really feel like I'm not the most qualified person in the room to be doing fisheries <laughs> news tonight uh, with our special guest Tony Tardio in the you studio. You are joking, aren't you? <laughs> he's, uh, he's pulling my No, no, yeah. Tony, I'm about to read the news and that's your job. Oh, yeah, so well, it's I'll good. be watching you very close. Okay, okay, well, here I go. See how the inflections go. Yeah, Scoring. All right, so yeah. I'm, I'm not, I usually don't do too good, but anyway. Uh, so I'll do that, but we've got a special little thing you're going to do after the news, so let's get into it. The first uh, first headline is Be Shark Smart along the coast this summer. Beachgoers, swimmers, surfers, anglers and divers are being encouraged to be smart, shark smart this coming summer by following six basic steps. And there it is on your screen now. Always swim, dive or surf with a friend because then it's a 50-50 chance yeah. that you get eaten or your friend gets yeah. eaten. The more friends sure you've got, the better. Make sure you're a faster swimmer. Well, yeah, keep and informed. I, and, I, and I'd say make sure you're with a friend who's a bit bigger than you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've got my brother-in-law Pati there, so I'm all right. <laughs> Particularly if they're a bit of a wagyu type. Is that, yeah. what, is that what you mean? Uh, keep informed of the latest sightings at w. Uh, emergency.vic.gov.au Swim between the red and yellow flags on patrol beaches. Avoid areas that attract sharks, such as where that whale washed up in Sorrento. Yeah. <laughs> Round dead whale. Well. Yeah. Is that still um, there? Because that has smelled like anything. No, it's, yeah. it's gone out to sea now. So, oh, but there'd be some sharks hoeing into it, I can yeah. tell you. A bit like us in the Italian restaurant about half an hour ago. I can <laughs> tell you right, with exactly. that panettone. We, we just <laughs> finished off as a nice uh, bit of sweets, Tony, I can tell you. And uh, watch for signs of unusual behaviour of wildlife or fish. So if you see fish jumping, it usually means there's a shark trying to eat them. <laughs> and help others be informed. Uh, learn more at vfa.vic.gov.au forward slash shark dash smart. So there is a lot of sharks in our bay at the moment, guys, whether we realise it or not. Not just of the gummy wow. variety, but it is um, <clears throat> the, the massive food chain that's entered the bay. The schools of salmon, the schools of kingfish, and of course schools the sharks come yes. after Are, are so. you amazed, David, that more people aren't, uh, you know, Take coming... It closer to sharks, you know, getting brushes with and, sharks. Oh, I can't believe that there's not because um, I, I know some people that cite some things and yeah. you just wonder why there hasn't been, you know, there's maybe a, a celebrated, few attacks. Or not celebrated, but a very well-known case of an attack uh, at Brighton, off Brighton Pier yeah. in the 1930s. If you go back through the record, Were you you'll reading see. the news that evening? Oh, no, just sorry. I think yeah, Dennis no. O'Kane. <laughs> uh, Dennis O'Kane was. Yeah, no, he, he was the manager at the time. Yeah. Uh, then he was in the thirties. I remember that. And, and so, what did someone uh, die well, from that? Well, the attack? story I read from one of the newspapers was that a, a, a young kid jumped off the, the Middle Brighton Pier yeah. and straight into the shark. And basically, in front of all the people that were on the pier, was, wow. was was attacked and never seen again. Wow! In the 1930s, so it has happened. Yeah, yeah. in Melbourne. I um, hate to say it, but it could only be a matter of time. But anyway, well, let's move on. Uh, this is a great bit of statistics that's come from our boat ramp surveys. The headline, Calamari grows in popularity. Over the last decade, calamari squid have become an increasing popular target species for anglers now fishing Port Phillip Bay. Now you're talking, David. You've got to switch from flathead, Tony, <laughs> yeah. to here. Result, results from the boat ramp surveys show that about 30% of recreational anglers targeted calamari last year, compared to less than 10% 10 years ago. Right. Look at the graph. It's And that is going up, Tony, I reckon, at a rate of knots. I mean, well, now, now, would I be right in saying that the Italians and the Greeks 
were the first ones to eat the calamari well, and love it. The mm. story I heard was before we came along, and I say we being of Italian background, yeah. you didn't eat calamari. It was bait. Yes. Cat food. That's right. <laughs> We put it on the, uh, you know, the the, the, the to eat list. Yeah. And now it's a delicacy. Everybody, I, mean, I love yeah. calamari I, more than I try and have it every Sunday with a glass of Flathead and calamari yeah. for me are like this. You know, you put snapper down here and all the other stuff. It's just, yeah. uh, but yeah. Calam and when you catch a beautiful calamari, yeah. like off uh, Queenscliff uh, mm. a couple of years ago, we went out for three days in a row. We mm. caught some huge ones. Yeah. And they're just you as nice as the bag little ones. Sorry? Three days in a row. Yeah, well, there's a bag limit per day, isn't there is, it? There is, yeah. Yeah, well, we, that's what we... That, I've only been fined <laughs> once. <don't> <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you that story later on. Okay. Okay. I, I thought yeah. it was a pirate Tony, would fish. you let me finish the news? <laughs> yeah, go <laughs> <for> <laughs> <me>. <laughs> All right, uh, last week we talked about FADS, fish, agri a a fish attracting devices, they've called them here. That, that's a lot easier to say. <laughs> um, the headline, new FADS for Torquay Reef, and I'm going to show you some photos, but Minister Pulford was on the show last week and introduced these. They're the boys that you're going to see at the top of the water column. And these boys, I didn't realise it when the minister announced that last no. week, but they're actually going to be tied to the next photo, yep. which is the big concrete blocks. Oh, which so we already, didn't have that. Yeah. So they already form a reef in Torquay. That yeah. was sunk, I don't know, a year, two years ago. Yeah. But I think there's... Um, I think there's... No, I haven't got... There's 25 concrete yep. modules like that that weigh around 20 tonnes each. Yep. And they're in clusters of five. And the fads, now the next diagram, that's that's how they're going to be attached. So there's going to be these, okay. there's going to be a rope and then a, a little subsurface buoy. Then there's going to be another rope and there's swivels. I hope they've used uh, some good <laughs> stainless instead of brass or something. Um, and then the big buoy. So you, you know where the rope is. And underneath, they are hoping that they just get swarms of kingfish around wow. there. Well, I think it so will. now... Will. Where this, where is this located? Um, I think we've got a map there. So it's it's around the 30 metre mark, directly out from Torquay. And if you look at the next slide, it tells you um, some of the kilometres from some of the nearest boat ramps. So Anglesey Ramp, um, out of Ocean Grove, out of Queenscliff. It is not that far. And obviously, you need the boat to go out through the heads or into the you know to the ocean. Mm. But um, it. That's a great yeah. reef, and the fads are just an extra attractant to try and get some bait fish up around the surface and then some quality... Well, why wouldn't they do that in Port Phillip Bay, David? Uh, because those pelagics main... You know, you need the depth, Tony. I mean, that's 30 metres. Yeah. Um, hanging a, 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 a buoy, you know, only 10 metres, and the amount of traffic in Port Phillip Bay that if someone wrapped their prop around it would yeah, okay, be pretty right. dangerous. So uh, it's more an offshore thing. And in right. New South Wales, they have them right along the coast. So, okay. so there you go. Lucky last bit of news is the Hooked on Portland event, and we've got that uh, on our screen now. Get down to it if you want to start booking your accommodation and get down to this great event, three-day festival. It starts on Friday the 26th of January, which is Australia Day, and there's all those activities. You can see them there. So there you go. That's the news. That's Tony, it. I've got a question for you. Um, I, last year, I think I cracked the code for cuttlefish. Because you're, you, you get the odd cut, cuttlefish in the bay, you know, and I reckon my ratio was about 200 calamari and I'd catch a cuttlefish. 200 calamari, catch a cuttlefish. Now I can go out and target cuttlefish. But have you had much experience with the taste of cuttlefish? Because yes. I think they're sensational. Absolutely. Um, well, when we go off Queenscliff on the odd occasion that we actually catch something, yeah. uh, we would say the ratio would be maybe four calamari to one cuttlefish. There's a yeah. particular point. Yeah. Uh, just uh, there's a, a brick wall. I think it's the RSL Club there or something. Yeah. At the well, in the water, just uh, there's a wall. Yeah. In the water. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that that seems to be a cuttlefish area there because we've caught a heap of cuttlefish really? in, that, in that area. Do you, you know fish? You just told any... about two hundred thousand people. But... Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, don't go there all the time because we want to catch some as well. So eating qualities. What's your opinion on cuttlefish versus calamari? Oh, I think it's similar. Yeah, yeah. So I, mean, I think you, it's better. Have you had the pasta mm. dish where you use the ink from the cuttlefish or the ink from the mm. calamari? No, most of it gets on my shirt. Right? Oh, well, you, 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 <laughs> no, but no, I've worked it out. No, I, and last year I worked it out. So what you do is you get your cuttlefish and you put it in the freezer without cleaning it. 
Yeah. So if you put that in at night, and then the next morning, uh, or if you want to do it, you know, around lunchtime, and take it out about four or five hours later when it's not quite fully frozen, right? And then clean it because the ink, ink sac isn't going to spill everywhere. So you're actually, I've got some preserved ink sacs in my freezer. And I am going to learn how to make... In fact, we, I might invite you down the peninsula well, this not, Christmas holidays. Yeah, yeah, well, look... I, and I, if I provide the ink sacks in yeah, the past, well, would you... Mate, I would be able to do it. I'd need a bit of help on the phone and stuff, but I, I'd be able to do it. Yeah. But it's not for my Would you case. be dialing Rome or Sicily? Probably Sicily, Sicily actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard it's big. <laughs> Cuttlefish are very big in Sicily. They love it, yeah. 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 And, and the, the black pasta cut of... of yeah. The thing that you get from the ink, that's that's huge. Yeah. The thing is you pay for it because it's, it, it takes a long time to go through your system. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So it is the well, family like crew. Dave doesn't want to eat it anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's, like you, you have to get used to seeing what <laughs> yeah. you don't normally see. <laughs> <laughs> so, so and it's Tony, about three days to wash, wash Is that an through. Italian no. tradition, though, the black pasta? Yeah, yeah because, I think it's more a Sicilian I, thing, yeah. Yeah, because it's yeah. only really taken off here, what, I reckon, the last two or three years, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, oh, they've been doing it for years. I mean, I've got a lot of Sicilian friends, yeah. and uh, make, they can't get enough calamari, and they can't get enough of the black no. pasta. It's, yeah. uh, it's, yeah. It gives it a bit of a sweetness to it, too. Now, yeah. you were talking earlier on about Australian salmon. Yes. Mm. Well, I, I, I'll tell you why, because off Werribee South, mm. one day, uh, we came upon, we saw all these birds, you know, just mm. hovering around the surface and going crazy. And we thought, oh, we'll just put some lures out. And, mm. uh, and we just couldn't get enough. Yeah. Um, and, the, and, and they Did were Did you go over your bag? Was that the day you got fined? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was another day. We, uh, we only got a few because, we, look, we, we could have got 300 day. if we wanted to in about an hour. <laughs> you settled for 250. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but we took home about five. Because yeah. right, I wasn't sure about whether I would like them or not, and I don't like them. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I ask is whether everybody else is like me. Yeah. I cooked it, yeah. um, and it, it, it smelt the whole house out. Yeah, yeah. would have. Oh, oh, They've got to be bled straight away when they're Which caught. Which I did. Yeah, and I they're that. all right if you cook them that you, night. But you've got to take the bloodline out what, and the, fill it. Yeah, the best thing is red cook meat. the one, but you've probably got to convert the 249 into something else, like <laughs> yeah. early or something like that that you kept. So, uh, coming up product of the week will uh you'll look cool in what we're going to show you next i'm not doing the fishing. weather is it weather? oh s okay before we go to the break <laughs> hold hold that, hold that. Uh, after every good news break there's a weather tony you I, want me to do it do over to you okay, please okay, sorry i, took, I forgot I about that they're the yelling in my ear but go on uh, now this is a rigid rigid ditch rigid weather, ditch because the forecast, I think, is a bit different tomorrow. Well, it's changed to 37. Just make it show me, Pete. A sunny morning tomorrow as we head for a top of 37 degrees. Cloud increasing in the afternoon. Winds normal westerly at 10 to 15 knots, shifting west to southwesterly at 5 to 10 knots in the late evening. Currently, it's 23 degrees in Melbourne, minus 2 at the North Pole where Santa Claus is Correct. and uh, about uh, 152 here in the Channel 31 studios. I think I made bad decision by wearing the, uh, the coat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Tony, the, the female audience at home is just going, oh, Tony Tardio. <laughs> uh, we're a minute and a half over there yelling in my ear. Yeah, well, I've got to finish here. Tony oh, Tardio, oh. Melbourne Zone, 3 a Oh, yeah. you meant to finish that. <laughs> we'll be back shortly on Talking Fishing. <laughs> Talking Fishing. Hi, David Kramer here. If you love talking fishing, why not get your company involved? Just go to talkingfishing.com.au and click the link to help support the show. Get on board today. Talking Fishing. Product of the Week, brought to you by Tackle World. Talking Fishing. Now, when it comes to fishing, I live by one very strict code. If you can't catch fish, you may as well look good doing it. And that is why Spotters are my absolute favourite company of all time because with some of these new glasses and bits and pieces they've got coming out, I can look good when I'm not catching anything and that's most of the time. So, with that opener, I want to introduce to you the Spotters Grayson. Now, 
I think where spotters have come a long, long way in the last few years, they're starting to really uh, deal and approach and really appeal to a broad market, not just the fishermen. And I think these Grayson glasses are, are just about up there with some of the best. So probably rocking, I guess, your square slash Ray-Ban style, Dave. Mm. They come in all your favourite lenses, both in the Colombian resin and glass. I think these are going to be pretty red hot come Christmas. I know the young fellas at work are absolutely frothing over them. Would I be right in saying that it's probably the lightest weighted pair of spotters on the market now? Definitely, definitely. So They're just now, sensational looking. One trend that spotters are all over, and I had no idea this even existed until speaking to the lovely family at spotters, matte finish. Mm. Yeah. They love it. It, yeah. it's they love it yeah. so i mean you can you yes, can see I think there. someone has just entered the studio it looks like a, uh, it could be part <laughs> yeah. of the, ma the mafia if we can swing the camera over there yeah. at all <laughs> 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 like the this head of the mafia too. has just joined yeah. the yeah. channel yeah. studio it's only business <laughs> make enough that you can refuse yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so only <laughs> business <laughs> these are fantastic yeah. Yeah. So every, and write, tony they're write fishing glasses yeah that's right so write that down for for santa's list spotters grayson the lightest frame yep that they have uh, put into production. Very, very stylish and up to date with trends. Something you can not only wear on the boat catching your whiting in your calamari or your flathead down at Werribee. <laughs> tone. Maybe that might be the missing piece. Yeah. Uh, but you can also pop them on and cruise down the street and be a cool well, sort well, of cat I think on the block. how you introduce that was if you can't catch fish, you may as well look good at doing yeah. it. Yeah. And Tony, that suits Tony <laughs> down and to you know tea, what? doesn't That's it? That's probably why spotters are proud sponsors of this show. <laughs> <laughs> so. But Tony, they, they actually look stylish. Well, um, I haven't yeah. seen them yet. Well, we'll yeah. put the you camera back, back on you. But you they reckon actually... I can take these? <laughs> you can take <laughs> yeah. them home. Yeah. 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 Mate, I like Tony, you're fine to take them home if you can leave a couple of hundred on the, yeah. on the uh, couch. <laughs> how, is how, much, how much do they sell oh, yeah, for? 200 way, yeah. But, mm. do you know what? If you This week, if you buy them this week, I think you get a free Hat. Yeah, we're getting there. Oh, you're going to well, do we got another one. And the, oh, okay, we've you're going to do another pair of glasses. <laughs> well, don't forget those. Uh, Grayson. Can I? It's not just the Grayson. Can I so the they look good. Yeah. So that, is there another new the pair? There's another new pair, and these are the Spotters Chaos. Now, I think your hardcore fisherman's probably going to get right amongst these and have a good look because they're kind of that beautiful crossover between a full coverage fishing sunglass, but also your your nice casual pair that you can wear to the pub after a hard day's fishing. Um, Little bit more of a wraparound style, not as square as the Grayson that we looked at, but again, just doing them in that beautiful matte finished frame. Uh, and again, all of your favourite lenses. Now, do you Dave, know that Dave, we've just, been, you yeah. and I, Trell, you know, we've all been wearing spotters for quite a few years. Yeah. Yeah. Just very quick, off the cuff, favourite lens. Oh. I know there's one, I know there's different lenses for different occasions, but if you had to pick one, what would it be? I like the blue mirror. Blue mirror? Nah, the, the photochromic, the, the, the... Penetrator? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Halide, halide would be mine. So, but I have two yeah. favourites because the extreme, which is the yellow glass... For your fresh water. For the fresh water and dull times. Yeah. And quite often I'm having a dull moment when I go fishing and, and, quite, and they are just so good. I'm quite good. glad everyone answered the way they did because yeah. what I was trying to prove by the question is there is a specific set of glasses mm. which you will enjoy in the range of spotters. Mm. They're all very different subtle and you can really hone them to what you want to use mm. them for. Do you know so the, chaos, the chaos is designed and built with narrow heads and high bridges in mind. Yeah, well, this Trally? is the other thing with sunglasses. <laughs> they won't fit you. I did say uh, thought you just made no, a pair of no. sunglasses, and if they no. fit, awesome. If they yeah, don't, well, there's luck. people with eyes very close together. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's some me. people with <laughs> with a nose, the bridge that goes all the way up to the eye. Well, yeah. these are designed that's for high bridges yeah. and narrow heads. Mm. Right. There's a new pair for that. It's coming out yeah. next year. It's mm. called the Spotters Weirdo. Charlie helped him out with that. These ones have stylish temple design and temple grips. To ensure they stay where they are meant to, these that the chaos. So yeah. I'm just reading all about that. And, a lot, of, and, a, and a lot I can of time read with these glasses on that. too. That's yeah. so a lot of time and effort goes into the design of these. In all seriousness, so yeah. we've been to the factory. We've They're seen number, it on this show number a couple one. of times. Yeah. Um, number one. Always coming up with something a little bit different. So have a look at that. Spotters Grayson, Spotters Chaos, and Dave. Now you can talk about your shirt and hat well, because if you purchase a pair of spotters at the moment. Well, have a look at the lovely shirts that you get with them. So you get a nice polo. You get a free mm. shirt with it, you know, like a nice spotters polo. And one of the best Men's looking ladies, caps on the or market. if yep. um, those that voted yes can have a white one as well. Yep. And uh, and then squid ink off. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, wouldn't that Tony? Wouldn't that be good? You oh, squid fishing. I would be so way. happy to have squid all it'd, over. And it end up. Now this is before, after. <laughs> <laughs> but you get a nice hat. You get all that with your spotters. Uh, if you're coming and buy some spotters this week, so yeah. there you Excellent. go. And because we're in the Christmas spirit, I'm when the these season, home. These I just want to. I just want to make a very quick shout out to the spotters family. Yeah. They've been supporters of us from the start. Yeah. We've known them a very long time and they've worked quite closely with us for a long time. Mm. You will not find a better group of people that are making some unbelievable products. Adam, so, Adam, they're, are they in Australia? Yes, yes, Australia. the frames are. The Absolutely. Frames are. Absolutely. Well, even, even no, with no, the lenses, no. they the, get the, the lenses in in a block. The glass and they shave, is they shave them some out. of the mm. best glass you can get in Japan, Tony. And they actually shave them, mould them, uh, do all the work to them. In Kilsyth. Kill okay. Yeah. Well, that's so, excellent, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Unbelievable. They're almost product. scratch proof, are they? Pretty boy. Well, we've seen, we've seen the old footage of the car key on the oh, lens. Yeah, amazing. Pretty good. That's yeah. for the glass pair yeah. only. I must add. Not yeah. shotgun Columbia proof. Resin. They're good. Yeah. Where are we testing yeah, the shotgun? Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. What, what's What's the biggest fish you've ever caught? Uh, look, uh, in all honesty, I have caught a pretty big snapper. Huh. Uh, and I caught it off Safety Beach, and I went with uh, a friend of mine and another friend, Ugal, who's since passed away. Ugal was a magnificent fisherman, and he kept his, you know, one of these guys has got a beautiful boat, keeps it perfectly clean. Unfortunately, Ugal passed away a couple of years ago yeah. of cancer. But uh, we went with him, <clears throat> and in 45 minutes, we caught three huge snapper. Yeah. And I said on air, because Ernie Sigley was on air then, that they were, oh, I think I said six kilos. I hadn't yeah. measured them, but they looked, looked like that big one with well, the big heads there. Were they that big that they were on the 1930s news that night? No. No, okay. Was just but Rex Sigley. Hunt rang up and yeah. said, oh, I don't believe they were, they were six kilos. And I showed him a photograph of the, uh, uh, on, the, on the iPad that I had. He goes, oh, they're about four kilo. But even four kilo, I'm they're happy with snapper. four kilo. Uh, good snapper. But we put them yeah. on the barbecue. They were too big for the barbecue. Yeah. And I didn't really like the meat, the eating of them. Yeah. Uh, they're dry. fun to catch. Yeah. You know, bringing them in yeah, and they're not watching the best them. Especially in that, yeah, uh, yeah. We did go fishing off southern New South Wales uh, a couple of years ago trying to catch a marlin. Oh, yeah. And we caught a couple of bonitos. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the bait. They're not, yeah. not quite the same. Yeah, thing, that's they? right. Yeah. And uh, no yellowfin tuna. We tried to get some yellowfin. But we caught bonitos, and the guys say they, they, they don't eat them there. No, um, use them as bait. But we ate them because we took one. It was fantastic. Chicken of the sea. Uh, I think you guys are spoiled. Uh, dear. You're right. You're up, right. Up next, Kramer's mailbag. A little bit of political incorrectness coming away right after this on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Make mine, make mine a morning to G'day, David Kramer here. I'm a massive fan of the Mazda BT50, having personally driven and owned one for more than five years now. And to tell you what, you can't beat them for an all-round great ute and a great tow vehicle. Get into Mornington Mazda before the end of the month and grab yourself a run-out bargain. I made mine a Mornington Mazda. Make mine, make mine a Mornington Mazda. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Now, plenty of mailbag coming up at Tony on our Facebook. People do make comments, and uh, someone's just said, Hi guys, Tony, the last fatal attack in Victoria was 1956, and it was at the Portsea, it was a Portsea lifesaver, John Wishart. It happened late in the afternoon after a surf carnival, so yeah. there you go. Yeah, but there Not was in the, the bay. one prior to that yeah. in 1930. But there has been that a was the, yeah, yeah, yeah. some yeah. eaten since then, so I, nasty yeah. things. Of course, yeah. Harold Holt went missing on the other side of the yeah. bay. So. I did too. Do you reckon he got eaten by a shark? Well... I don't know, but it's going to be 50 years since he went missing uh, right. in a couple of days' time. Is it really? Yeah. Is that going to make the news? To, you're going to be well, reading Well, it's already been on, on the news. It was 17th of December, 1967. Can you imagine yeah. if it happened now? Our Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, goes missing, swimming somewhere. Yeah. How huge that would be. Yeah. We probably yeah. wouldn't miss him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Oh, oh, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> well, you said the next segment, segment was going to be politically incorrect. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, well, we made it. 56, they didn't even make an Olympic event out of it. Either. Oh, yeah. oh, dear. All right, let's get into Kramer's mailbag. And the first one, I, I just read these out as they come, and it's not my fault. <laughs> It just says, uh, G'day Kramer and gang, uh, enjoy the show heaps, but it lost the plot on the 21st of November. Oh, golly. When you went way uh, too far in the discussion about increasing women in fishing and boating. On oh. Oh, no, 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 no. you got to wait. This is uh, politically incorrect. Okay. As if waiting three quarters of an hour in a queue at Altona isn't bad enough, can you imagine the chaos caused by just one female trying to reverse a trailer at 4 a.m.? <laughs> So, <laughs> sorry, we shouldn't be laughing. No, we shouldn't laugh. be laughing. No, because Tony, there, don't laugh. Tony, there's many women that can back a trailer at 4 a.m. Oh, isn't there? I don't mm. know anyone actually. Um, <laughs> it does go on to say they can hardly even back out of a shopping centre car park <laughs> with no trailer. So, I think women are, are different. They're spatially, they're spatially different. Their brains are wired in different ways yeah, for that sort of activity. Yeah, yeah. But there is yeah, a, a, a really surf. big really Which big one? encouragement to get women into fishing and, and fisheries. Uh, oh, Victorian yeah. Fisheries Authority do yeah. a great job. Yeah. I just don't think they took into consideration <laughs> backing a child for it. <laughs> anyway, we shouldn't have read that one out. It was wrong. No. And apologies to all the women watching the show. Please stay watching. Tony, Tony Tardio is on tonight. <laughs> Got a great voice. I'm on um, your side, ladies. I'm yeah. on your side. Yeah. We're backing you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, next one. Uh, hi, David. Just watching your show and have a question. Why a size limit on trout? Maybe we should have a size and bag limit on carp. Uh, surely trout have some impact on our rivers and ecosystem. Uh... I don't, I, is that is, is the point? Is the point that it's an introduced species? Or? Yeah, and they're a bit of a pest. Oh, look, and, and yeah. I, I'm, I'm not. Don't don't take the, uh, that I'm saying it's a pest because no, I love trout. No, but the reason <laughs> trout there was some limits was to try and create a bigger trout fishery, like as in bigger size fish. Yeah. And it was a bit of a push by uh, a lobby group, the Australian Trout Foundation, and they were successful in lobbying and saying, you know, we just yeah. want a few rivers, not. Not many waters at all in Victoria have a, a limit, so that's why. And uh, you can't have a bag and a size limit on something in the letter return to the water, which is the carp. So there you go. Uh, no Kerry writes into us, my husband was just standing in front of the TV shouting. He was what, shouting. What have we done now? <laughs> about Cario Bay supposedly being freer netting by April next year. He is furious as he was told by authorities that it was free in September last year. Oh. He works in the fishing sporting industry and gets regular updates, obviously from the wrong people, Kerry. So what is the truth? He gets so angry with the netting in the bay as it spoils it for the amateur fishermen and destroys the habitat of juvenile fish. Well, unfortunately, Kerry, no, they weren't all out last September. They will be out of Cario Bay next April, as the minister said last week. And I think they've got till 2020 to be out of Port yeah. Phillip Bay in total, where it will go back to only 10 long liners in the bay, and that'll be really the only commercial fishing that will happen. So we can keep um, shouting until April next year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, but Cryo Bay, um, it'll be a different place after April, taking yeah, those nets right. out. And I mean, Tony, you know, the, the yeah. beautiful morning to Peninsula that we've experienced before, it's, um, it, it used to be hit pretty hard. It's already changed. Well, David, I've been going down there on and off for about 18 years yeah. and you know years gone by we'd go there all excited mm. we've got a boat we're going to go there go fishing yeah. the ladies at home waiting for the fish to arrive because we've got a lot of kids to feed at home yeah. and we come back at two or three in the afternoon with no fish it's disappointing mm. it's very disappointing and it puts you off yeah. Having a boat and doing all that sort of yeah. so it's a really important industry to keep going. That is the recreational fishing industry. Yeah. So the more you can do so that mugs like me can actually just put a line out and catch something. Yeah. That's right. Um, and give us a bit of incentive and yeah. uh, uh, and there's still plenty of commercial fishing going on in Australia, offshore yeah. Yeah. and uh, there's aquaculture. I mean, there's all sorts of fish that are commercially <laughs> caught just not in our bays yeah, and streets. I, I agree with seeing. that. And that's yeah. one thing, I must give it to Daniel Andrews, because I'm critical in, of him in a lot of other areas. Oh, every second day on the news. Yeah. Well, no, the news is the news, and yeah. we just yeah. take it straight. He, yeah. what, I'm critical of other things, but uh, but that he's done the right thing, and yeah, he was yeah. the first one to agree to do, to, to do yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, we're seeing uh, uh, improvement all the time. 
yeah. uh, with the fishing. And did you take the fish home to your wife, gutted or ungutted, being a good Italian? Well, I got it myself. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I I uh, I got it for all of my fishing pals too because oh, right. I, w I wouldn't yeah. trust them with a sharp knife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, one more to go, they're, boys. They're Sicilians, Stephen. <laughs> you don't yeah, expect them yeah. anywhere near. Uh, Mark writes and he says, "Hey, Kramer and boys, I'm going to be up at Marimbula for two weeks camping over Christmas. Could uh, would you be able to help and point me in the best?" Fishing charters to go on. Many thanks from Mark. Mark, the best thing to do and probably do your homework right now is to ring Ron and Gail at Tackle World Marimbula because they are just absolute champions. They've lived in that town for decades and they will be able to give you the good local knowledge about who to go with, where to go, and where you're going to catch fish. And I'll tell you, Marimbula is just on fire. Yeah, some um, kings. Some big kings yep. around the big Marimbula wharf yeah, at the moment. that's right. But I've also heard monster calamari. Now, you normally don't get monster calamari up in New South Wales. The monsters are hanging, and maybe that's why the, the kingfish are in, but yeah. they are getting monster calamari what makes them off the wharf. Because they only live nice. for one year, calamari. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so what they makes do? them monsters? That's so they just eat real well, quick. Tony, a, a, a calamari grows as big as the food source that's around it. Right. So, you know, down in it's the northern end of the bay and there's not a lot of fish that they can catch and eat. You know, they might only be small. Yeah. You get down in those fast-flowing areas where there's lots of salmon, tommy ruff, that sort of stuff, they just grow big and they grow That's fast. A lot but of pasta yeah. up there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And they tell me they come in in September, October from... Uh, They're already in, but they start... Oh, well, yeah. They, and they spawn near, they start near spawning. Queenscliff there. Yeah, and Portsea uh, and Sorrento, yep. right? right. Yeah. 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 They're good. Uh, if you'd like to write into Kramer's mailbag, mailbag, this is what you do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, P.O. Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria 3197 or email kramer at ifish.com.au. And coming up next, this week's Hot Spots will be back shortly on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. G'day. Helen here from Paul Worsland's Tackle World Cramer. Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water, truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my boat. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now the segment you've all been waiting for. Hotspots, brought to you by Seamaster Batteries. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. And welcome back to Talking Fishing Hotspots, Tony. This is yeah, can where we, we wipe Werribee South off this rock bottom, please. <laughs> you want to tell us where else you fished for the last year and we'll wipe them off as well? <laughs> uh, this is where we tell people where to catch a fish. So if you want to go on the weekend. Yeah, I'm listening, yeah. but I'm all ears. People, yeah. people trust us. Uh, if you'd like a snapper, try the morning tide change. That's the best tip I can give you. The morning tide change out of Frankston, and they seem to be a little bit shallower off Frankston, about 10 to 12 metres of water. Nice. About time. Some good fish coming from that area. So I wouldn't say they're the biggest fish we've seen all season, but certainly Pick consistent in numbers. So Frankston, 10 to 12 metres on the morning tide change if you can. King George Whiting, many people are heading over to King George Whiting from Snapper. Better tasting, better catching, I reckon, in my opinion. Correct. And St. Leonard's is the capital over the western side of Port yep. Phillip Bay. St. Leonard's is just absolutely on fire. You just need four to five metres of water. Try that little bit of deeper water if you can for the bigger fish boys. Yeah, I had a phone call from Chris as we came into the studio tonight at uh, yeah. our, our Geelong store. And he said, you've got to mention something, you've got to mention St. Leonard's. Uh, they've just bagged out yeah. the last couple of days. Every and it's important about. to get there, like, within, what, have, what have we got, 10 days till Christmas or something yeah. like that, whatever it is, um, get there because the crowds will um, yeah. absolutely multiply yeah. by the thousands yeah. Yeah. in about and, 10 and days. And will they time. catch the fish or will they scare yeah. the fish so away? Probably scare them <laughs> yeah. away. Right. And squid there too. They said mad squid. Yeah, really good squid too. Let's head over to Western Port now, uh, and it's a repeat of last week. I'm not afraid to say that because it is the capital of Western Port. The top end of the middle spit, there is some sensational King George Whiting. And I mentioned earlier on the show uh, a young man 
pulled up at the shop at about nine o'clock on Sunday morning and said, come and have a look at my catch. And I went out and got the camera out and 47 centimetres King George wide. He had Ooh, a few nice. 45s yeah. as well. Probably but the worst thing for yeah. though, David, yeah. for someone like me who's a pretty amateur, amateur fisherman, it's the mm. tides. They run really hard. Yeah. yeah. It's and a different gotta, place to fish. And yeah. you've got to be careful too because you can get mm. your boat stuck there for six or seven hours and you can't get out because <laughs> the tide's gone down. They say, Tony, there's two people that fish in Westerport, those that have run aground and those that haven't. <laughs> and they're about those to. Those that will. <laughs> that will, yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. Uh, another place that's fantastic for King George Whiting is down at Phillip Island and San Remo is absolutely on fire, again, for big fish. Un underrated, in fact, think, San Remo. they've just whispered, whispered in my ear. San Remo is going off. No, oh, dear. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I hate oh. to say it. It's going off. <laughs> so, San Remo. You've been to San Remo in Italy, David. Did no, you go there no, when I you didn't went there? get to that part of it's, Italy. It's uh, between sort of Genoa and, uh, and Nice, sort of. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, on the a Capri. beautiful part yeah. of the uh, yeah. world. Yeah. San Remo, yeah. they call it over there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Trelli. A yes. couple of hot spots that you've given us this week. Um, yeah. Let's kick it off with Lake Epilock. What's happening there? You weren't allowed to say yeah. that, were you? No. Well, <laughs> this guy oh, came I thought you, were meant to, to, I thought you said put them up. Yeah, yeah, no, you yeah, say no. not put them up. I said, I said I'm not supposed to mention it. But Lake anyway, Epilock. Yeah, Lake Epilock's been fishing really, really good for redfin. So uh, soft plastics and bait, just small yeah. yabbies over that way. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm not supposed to say, but they said don't fish near the trees. So yeah, so. Um, mm. But I, I actually did, did mean don't fish near the trees. So avoid the trees and fish other places or drop offs and things like that. Use your sounder. Yeah, use your sounder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you actually pick them up on sounders. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Mm. And uh, lucky last Lake Nilakuti for cod and yellowbelly. Yeah, between Benalla and Mansfield, nilakuti has been fishing really well at the moment for Murray Cod. Yeah. Even with this rain that's sort of gone through, it's been uh, still fishing well. And you've also got you know, a really good chance for catching yellowbelly there if you sort of use jackals and things and working mm. really slow uh, and some redfin there, but uh, some surprisingly big cod in Lake mm. Nilakuti. I drove past Nilakuti the other week on the way up to Wagga Wagga yep. to bit of, have a bit of R&R, &R, and uh, it, it was brown yeah the water's brown <coughs> yeah that catchment area is sort of like a uh, a clay type of area and they do a bit of logging up in the so does uh, the water stay that color most of the year does it in the pines yeah oh no not really it does clear clears up, up. Clears, yeah. Yeah, clears up a fair bit but yeah. yeah it will go that real brown color but don't let that sort of worry because you're using big lures for murray cod and things yeah. like that so yeah they find them where have you south was a bit that yeah. color you were at the 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 poo farm but yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 the river that goes through there yeah. i mean obviously it's been raining a lot a lot of heavy rain brown yeah that's what I'm assuming the brown yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, went, I went out for a snapper fish last Wednesday night and it was a very low tide mm. that was due at midnight on Wednesday night last week. And I reckon I was f about 500 metres from the entrance of Patterson River and it was flowing mm. like like yeah. the Goulburn River yeah. trolley. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously it was very brown and this is yeah. in the dark and I had the spotlights on, but the, the, I could feel the current yeah. because you had a very low tide, so you had a lot of water coming out of the system, but you also had that Dandenong Creek catchment that runs yep. into Patterson River. It was flowing at 10 knots, yeah. 500 metres out from the I entrance. Drove, so that was a lot of rain. Yeah. We've had a lot of rain. Yeah, yeah I drove over Patterson oh, yesterday yeah. and it's still flowing through. Oh, yeah. would be. Yeah. And that would obviously yeah. push the fish down further yeah. you well, know into yeah, the bay yeah if they don't yeah. they, i mean there's a lot of mull away there tony that's right. sitting there um and they they come out because they want a bit of the salt the brim they want a bit of salt so that does it pushes a lot of fish out yeah. Up our way, pushes yeah. all the plastic bottles down the south of Australia, <laughs> so you feel central. <laughs> <laughs> tony your favorite fishing destination where would that be Oh, well. <laughs> Where have you said? Where have you said? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, 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 I was determined to come on this show and sound like I knew what I was talking no. about. No. Uh, now you're going to catch me out. Yeah, no, last we love these questions without no, notice. Look, I, we, I fish sort of, you know, uh, pretty much all of Port Phillip, and uh, I like all of those areas, but, but I, I don't know the areas intimately, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, um, but I like rye. You know, uh, I like Queenscliff, I guess, Sorrento, yeah, yeah, Queenscliff, that yeah. sort of area. Yeah. Uh, I love going over from Sorrento to, to Queenscliff. It's yeah. just, uh, and being at Queenscliff, and on a still day, you can yeah. see all the reef below. It's just, yeah. sometimes it's you beautiful. can actually see the, the calamari go onto the hook, which yeah. is just yeah, fascinating yeah, yeah. to see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tony, um, technically, you could be um, recognised as a former host of 3 Fishing. 
<laughs> no, Correct. Because no, whenever I'm I went sure. on holidays, you filled in well, for I me did with it that. For three, to, three times. Three right, times. So yeah. you are the former host of Three yeah, well, Machine. I really enjoyed uh, you know, it. You and Rex Hunt together with Adam and I have, yeah. you know, we're. You know, <laughs> collectively, I think there's about 40 years there. Uh, just yeah. one, one Rick, bloke did Rick it for a lot longer than us. He, he, he sort of laughs every time he says, oh, you hosted the fishing show. And he sort of walks off <laughs> laughing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, What's happened to fishing and radio? Because there's not a lot of fishing shows left on the radio now. Well, I'm surprised because so many people fish. Yeah. It's a great pastime, yep. and people want to know where to fish and how to fish better. Yeah. And what better way to do that yep. than to do it in a live radio show, like, like you do here in a live television yeah. show. Yeah. Um, so somebody should be doing it somewhere, a yeah. podcast even, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nothing but, like live radio, though, and people have got it on their stereos yeah. in their car as they're Absolutely. driving home. And yeah. It was a heyday. Uh, yeah, the fishing and back, even back in Rex's early days, you know, was just, you know, when Rex had two hours on a Friday night yeah, and yeah. it was golden radio. And, you know, if you're a fisherman and it's just gone now, it's, it's very disappointing. Well, and even television, like, I think there's nothing more relaxing than watching some guy catch fish. Mm. But you yeah. mentioned, uh, Tony, before how just being on the water. Yes. It's just a, a lovely thing to do. It's a Tony, lovely way to relax. Can I, we're going to wind up. Can I thank you for coming in tonight? Because it's uh, we haven't seen each other for a couple of Don't. years and we shared some great times. It AW. has been an absolute honour to be here with you guys. You guys are uh, a royalty in the fishing yeah. industry. There you go. And I've met Stephen tonight, so... Uh, He's a guy I want to keep in touch with. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's it for Talking Fishing. They're yelling in my ear. We hope you enjoyed the show. Next week, we preview some of your favourite destinations for the Christmas holidays in our last live show for the year. But we will be broadcasting a recorded show on Boxing Day and right throughout January as we take a break. Keep sending us your pics because we love to see all your photos, particularly your holiday snaps. Until we see you again next Tuesday on Talking Fishing, he's Tony Tardio. I'm David Kramer. Please stay safe in the water and enjoy your fishing. News time. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son. <laughs>